morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Tuesday the 7th of October 2025. Heaps to get through today, severe thunderstorms across south, central and southeast Queensland on the forecast. Heavy rainfall up in north Queensland, the potential for a tropical low, albeit very, very minimal at this point in time. And then rainfall just scattered throughout the remainder of Australia by the looks of things, especially down into the southeast. All the details on these weather events plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning. I will get to the rainfall forecast in North Queensland in a few minutes, but the biggest story uh, and the more concerning threat is going to be those severe thunderstorms in central and southeastern Queensland. So I'm going to talk about those right now. Now it's a clear picture across Queensland that's expected to remain the same for the next couple of days. You can see temperatures will continue to rise throughout the course of this week. They're into the mid-20s already at 9 o'clock this morning through Queensland, 10 o'clock if you're in New South Wales with daylight saving. Uh, we've got temperatures that are going to continue to rise throughout the remainder of this week and mid to high 30 degree days are expected. In the build-up to what's going to be a thunderstorm outbreak by the looks of things into southwestern Queensland and parts of central Queensland on Thursday afternoon. So have a look at this. You can see pulling it through Thursday, we get this line of moisture beginning to move through the, nor uh, the, the Northern Territory, South Australia and New South Wales. And that's going to push in towards southwestern Queensland through Thursday afternoon and evening. Um, we may see a few isolated thunderstorms towards the southwest around Thargaminda and Quilpie and Adavale, but the more likely chances of thunderstorms on uh, Thursday afternoon at least will be in the late afternoon around the northeast of New South Wales, around locations such as Lightning Ridge, will get more re Tamworth, those sort of places there. We will still see a few thunderstorms around the border or potentially over the border, but nothing further north than about St. George. And to be honest, most of the storms will occur towards the west of St. George as well. A very concentrated thunderstorm outbreak with the strongest stuff expected to be in the New South Wales side of things into the later afternoon and into the evening hours. Some really good thunderstorms are most certainly a possibility. It's not exactly the best environment for thunderstorms. There's hardly any convective available potential energy here. Uh, in the early afternoon, there will be some higher values, but you can see there really isn't much to write home about out in the convective available potential energy side of things. It's mainly being propped up by high temperatures, high humidity, and just that moisture band that's coming through, uh, which will create what is called a dry light environment, where we have that dry air meeting up with that moist air, and that's where thunderstorms do like to develop upon. You can see some good thunderstorms are most certainly possible into the later evening hours. This is at nine o'clock on Thursday night. Some really dense uh, thunderstorm and lightning activity outside of Mirabri here in the northeast of New South Wales. But again, I would take this with a pinch of salt. Conditions aren't exactly any Anything too flash, and I reckon that this is definitely a worst case scenario type forecast here. Thunderstorms and rainfall will push in towards the northern tablelands and into the mountainous regions through the northeast of New South Wales into late Thursday night and early Friday morning. And if we do see some high precipitation storm loads, which do look likely in a setup like this, we'd be seeing some uh, isolated and scattered rainfall accumulations between 30 to 60 millimetres, most likely between Narabri and Armadale, and then up to about Inverell in this little pocket here. Be interesting to watch what brings on Thursday, but it is Friday. Friday that's got most people's attention. Friday is a widespread severe thunderstorm chance day for parts of central Queensland and also into parts of southeastern Queensland as well. I'm not talking about Brisbane or the Gold Coast. We're not looking at thunderstorm chances for Brisbane or the Gold Coast on Thursday or Friday or Saturday for that matter. Uh, the thunderstorm chances do return later on in the weekend for Brisbane and the Gold Coast. I'll get to that in just a second. But in terms of southeast Queensland, it kind of stops at Toowoomba where the chance of thunderstorms is going to be. So in Queensland's thunderstorm alley here, which is between Rolleston Tambo and then down to about Kanamala and across towards St. George, particularly towards the west of Roma and this pocket here that I'm circling. From early Friday afternoon, we're expecting thunderstorms to very quickly blow up in what's going to be a very convectively favorable environment with high temperatures, high humidity, and high convective available potential energy values. Widespread thunderstorm activity is then forecast to occur through Friday afternoon and evening, and we will be seeing embedded severe thunderstorms, particularly towards the east of Tambo and Orgathella and towards the west of Rolleston in June and uh, Roma in this pocket here. Again, quite a remote pocket of Queensland, but locations such as Mitchell, Roma, Injun, Orgathella, Tambo, they all could be seeing severe thunderstorm activity. And then scattered thunderstorm activity with a chance of embedded severe thunderstorms down through St. George and then towards the uh, northeast of Gundawindi and Warwick. And we could be seeing thunderstorms extending right down towards Warwick and Wollongara by the looks of things along the New South Wales and the Queensland border. These thunderstorms look to be short-lived and later on in the afternoon, they really peter out quite quickly. After about six or seven o'clock in the afternoon and 
evening. Thunderstorm chances or chances of strong thunderstorms really falls off a cliff and all the energy that was going to be present in the atmosphere will either be used up or will see a return to stable conditions through later Friday evening. And this is going to happen, like I said, after about five or six o'clock at night, potentially out to about seven o'clock, the further north you are. And that means thunderstorms will abruptly ease off and abruptly stop. So it's going to be a small window of opportunity on Friday after about uh, one or two o'clock in the afternoon out to about five or six o'clock for these thunderstorms to develop. But uh, it definitely looks like we could be seeing some decent severe thunderstorm activity from it. Now, the best chance for severe thunderstorms is, as mentioned, around Orcathella, Injun, Roma, Tambo, Charleville, those sort of locations here. Locations that are likely to be the most significantly hit by severe thunderstorms include Orcathella, Tambo, Injun, and Roma. Locations such as Charleville or St. George or Gundawindi, Warwick or Toowoomba, very unlikely to see strong severe thunderstorm activity at this point in time. Now, it looks like these thunderstorms here are going to be low precipitation storm modes. We're going to see strong winds, potential for large hailstones, even some giant hailstones in some locations here considering the uh, instability in the environment and the amount of lift that's in the atmosphere uh, but it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing anything too crazy in the way of precipitation and that's really reflected between the rainfall forecast modeling here you can see on Friday afternoon and out towards Sunday morning really small rainfall accumulations are expected now these thunderstorms are going to be scattered which means for the most part a lot of places are going to completely miss out on the thunderstorms that are on the forecast don't be disheartened that's typical for a thunderstorm forecast if you do get a thunderstorm consider yourself either lucky or unlucky depending on how you view thunderstorms. I know a lot of people out here would consider themselves lucky to see a thunderstorm, especially one with quite a lot of rainfall in it. There's a lot of places out here that are dying for some rainfall at this point in time. So it is good to see some thunderstorms on the forecast, but just know that these ones are going to be very hit or miss. It's not going to be a widespread thunderstorm outbreak. There will be some scattered storms here and there, some of which could be severe and problematic, but for the most part, the majority of locations are unfortunately going to miss out on these rain-bearing thunderstorms. And to add to it, these thunderstorms aren't exactly going to have too much rainfall within them either. And we get a one day hiatus of thunderstorms on Saturday before the forecast models have done this. Have a look at this, a widespread powerful thunderstorm outbreak expected right into southeast Queensland through Sunday. Now this is something that I'm going to have to take with a very heavy pinch of salt. We do have convective available potential energy streaming into this part of Queensland through Sunday afternoon and into Sunday evening. And through southeast Queensland, through the Brisbane area, the Gold Coast area, and the Toowoomba area, these values aren't anything to shrug off either. They're definitely enough for severe thunderstorms. But what gets me is the fact that this has just appeared on the forecast modeling and other major forecast models have absolutely nothing. The GFS has a few thunderstorms here on the Capricorna coastline and the Wide Bay coastline around Gladstone and Bundaberg and a few stronger thunderstorms well in towards central and out towards western Queensland. The ICON forecast model has a few scattered thunderstorms down here into the more immediate southeastern corners of Queensland into the early afternoon and maybe a few thunderstorms into the Brisbane area in the late afternoon or early evening. And then to flip that on its head once again, the axis, which is normally the convective favourite has absolutely nothing in the way of thunderstorms. And the models that I do generally deem to be quite reliable on these sort of forecasts are the Eastman F and the Access, but they're saying completely different things at this point in time, so it's very difficult for me to make a forecast. In short, there is a chance of some thunderstorms on Sunday afternoon and evening into the Brisbane city area and through the Gold Coast, but it's not a very high chance at this point in time, and it's definitely going to be a forecast that I investigate a lot closer, uh, especially throughout the course of today and into tomorrow. By tomorrow, we'll see with the forecast models if there is going to be that chance of thunderstorms remaining and i will have some definitive answers by around Thursday on this but definitely something to keep in the back of your head at this point in time but not something that I'd be betting the farm on it's definitely caught me off guard and it's definitely been quite a surprise to see on the forecast models this morning I was scratching my head thinking what is this but it doesn't look like it's going to be overly likely at this point in time now I'm flicking things over to the rainfall forecast in Pan North. You know far north Queensland is getting some rainfall and it is that time of the year. We do have a lot of cloud now moving into the Coral Sea, uh, especially the northern parts of the Coral Sea. We've got all of this cloud here streaming out of the north and some rainfall is now beginning to develop here north of Willis Island. Not to mention we've also got some stronger winds now developing through some coral reef observation centres here. Some wind gusts now approaching 30 to 40 kilometres an hour, even 50 kilometres an hour in places and that lines up with our rainfall forecast. We're expecting these southeasterly trade winds to carry some rainfall up and towards North Queensland throughout the course of today with some isolated heavier falls possible around the Daintree Rainforest and even into the Casbury Coast through tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Heavy rainfall is possible north of uh, Cooktown, especially around Lockhart River and then uh, down towards the coast north or just north of Cooktown here, north of Cape, uh, Cape Flattery and Hopevale. We seeing some heavier showers moving through into the early afternoon hours and then this rainfall will slowly sink a little bit further south into the later afternoon hours and by this evening we're likely to see some heavier rainfall periods moving into 
into the Daintree rainforest and especially south of Cooktown, some heavier falls are possible. I'm not talking about anything too crazy tonight, but steady but heavy rainfall from these showers coming through, especially if we do see a coastal trough develop, we may be seeing rainfall accumulations around the 100 to 150 millimeter mark tonight, which I know for North Queensland is nothing too crazy. They see that stuff pretty much every other day around this time of the year or a little bit later on from this time of the year, but it is definitely something to be remaining quite vigilant about, especially considering the Daintree had a very good soaking not uh, not more than a month ago now. Uh, so having a look at rainfall like this, it could present the risk of flash flooding considering there are places and rivers in the Daintree rainforest that still have a little bit of water in them and a couple of areas of ground still quite uh, saturated and drenched from that recent rainfall. It looks like the Casper Coast will miss out at least today. A few showers and some heavier falls are possible into the Yarraba Peninsula and the Casper Coast through early tomorrow morning into late tomorrow morning, but it doesn't look like anything too crazy is going to develop around the Casper Coast either. The rainfall will ease out of the Daintree rainforest by the looks of things through Wednesday night, which could give a 24-hour window for some pretty serious rainfall accumulations to develop there. Now, the convective forecast models don't have anything too crazy on them by the looks of things. In fact, the axis convective, uh, which is normally a massive bias for heavy rainfall, particularly in the Daintree and the Casper Coast, really doesn't have anything crazy on the forecast modeling here, which surprised me when I was looking at it. Normally, this is the sort of forecast model with a setup that we have to see some ridiculous numbers on this forecast around the 200 to 250 millimeter mark, which also makes me think that this rainfall is going to be slightly lighter than what some of the forecast models are suggesting, or at least what I'm suggesting right now. But again, this is quite an unreliable forecast model, and when it doesn't actually have rainfall on the coastline, it does a terrible job up in North Queensland. So what am I expecting? Well, Daintree Rainforest, you're looking at triple figure rainfall accumulations in the next three days. Cassidy Coast, there's a chance of triple figure rainfall accumulations. I also reckon the Yopa Peninsula will see some decent rainfall accumulations tomorrow morning into late tomorrow morning. Uh, Cairns is looking at maybe 20 millimetres or so, nothing too crazy there. Lockhart River cooked down those places that I've mentioned as being kind of the only population centres in this zone of showers and heavy rainfall that's coming through. You could be seeing anywhere between 20 to 80 millimetres of rainfall and probably on the higher side of that, especially for Lockhart River interesting stuff. Good thunderstorms also expected over the ranges into the uh, western half of the Cape York Peninsula both tonight and also into tomorrow afternoon and evening and this will also carry through through Thursday as well. Some good thunderstorms expected throughout the southern parts of the Cape York Peninsula and potentially some good thunderstorms as well down around Mount Isa and Cloncurry as well. A good thunderstorm outbreak possible there. They get some ripper thunderstorms around this time of the year and it looks like next or this coming Friday and also potentially Saturday we will see some thunderstorms there. Very very convectively active through northern Australia this Friday, Sunday and Sunday and as we talked about in yesterday's forecast update it kicks off basically a week or a week and a half of very convectively favourable conditions across parts of the Northern Territory, WA and parts of Northwestern Queensland which means thunderstorms galore expected out to about the 20th of October and probably a little bit further beyond that as well. Looks like things do quieten down around the 20th of October but there are definitely some very stormy conditions expected from this point onwards out to about the 20th of October at this point in time. And the rainfall forecast for North Queensland does suggest more rainfall coming through from the southeasterly flow that's going to continue for the next, well, I guess, week or so, or out to about the next 10 days. And some half decent rainfall accumulations are possible through parts of the Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest. This is 14 day rainfall accumulations. Again, nothing too crazy, but we can normally extrapolate these numbers when we're seeing 125 millimetres or so. That normally says to me that we could be seeing anywhere up to about 300 millimetres of the Casper Coast. So rainfall is going to begin to build across these regions. It's not carrying over into more major population centres such as Townsville or Mackay, but we will start to see a return to rainfall in those locations by the looks of things sometime soon. Uh, the GFS actually did have something very interesting on the forecast, and it has been calling for this tropical low type thing for the last couple of days, and I'm only mentioning this to say that it is not going to happen. N-O-T, not going to happen. Not going to see a tropical low in the northern parts of the Coral Sea, but the GFS is still calling for it on its forecast modelling, uh, especially after about the 12th of October, I believe, it causes something moving into the northern parts of the Coral Sea and then traversing into the Torres Strait. Uh, it's just not going to happen. I mean, the conditions are not favourable for a tropical low or even a cyclone at, uh, for that matter, and that's because of deep layer wind shear. So this is the change in wind speeds, the increase in wind speeds through the upper atmosphere, and you can see as we get to the higher elevations, wind gusts do become very uh, hostile for organised low pressure system development. That jet stream really does uh, get in the way of any kind of tropical development, and into the upper atmosphere we've got some awful wind shear values, which means this tropical low will have an awful time developing if it did even manage to get itself going. So that's why it is not going to happen, and that's why it's not a concern to North Queensland. And all of the rainfall at the GFS is also so suggest all 200 millimetres of it. It's really not that much that's coming in for the northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula. Oh, actually, no, it's a lot more than that. They've recently up their forecast to 300 millimetres. Again, it's 
just not going to happen and it's not going to happen in this capacity here we're not looking at a flooding event or a tropical low or a tropical cyclone through northern Queensland. so there is no need to worry i hope that everybody has got the thought of a tropical low or tropical cyclone out of the head it's just not going to happen not the next two or three weeks and there's nothing on the long range forecast out into early november at the very earliest at this point in time so breathe a heavy sigh of relief the gfs is a notoriously unreliable model when we're talking long range but on that note, that's going to do it for today's weather forecast update. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it informative. And if you have, then please consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it as well. Check out the, the Facebook page. Plenty more updates still to come on the thunderstorm events over in southeast Queensland and rainfall up into north Queensland as well. But that is going to do it for me today. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them and their support is, as always, massively appreciated. But I'll catch you on the next storm. Have a great day. Have a great week. Goodbye.